13 years ago, I decided to turn my love of fishing from a hobby to a career. At 15, I got my very first job as a fishing guide at Eagle Nest Lodge in Manitoba. And while this may have just been a summer job, it turned into lifelong memories and friendships. This fall, I decided to take my wife Sam to Eagle Nest to show her where it all began. I was so excited for her to finally see this place that was so important to me. Are we rolling? Yeah. We're back. Where it all began. So there's Eagle Nest Landing and there's Eagle Nest Lodge. We were getting picked up at Eagle Nest Landing and we were headed to Eagle Nest Lodge. I'll tell you all about what we're gonna see, where we're headed, but this is gonna bring back just a flood of memories because this is where my fishing, I guess, career started where instead of it being just a hobby, it actually turned into a job. Yeah, back at Eagle Nest Lodge. Is that good? Insert photo of Jay with nerdy glasses. <laughs> Well, today we have the pleasure of being driven by Captain Jay. Hello, hello. Jay and I uh, worked together a couple of years ago. A few years ago, yeah, about a decade ago. It's about 27 miles. 27. And you've, you know where all the rocks are? No. Only <laughs> the ones I hit. <laughs> Eagle Nest Lodge is remote. While many groups fly into the lodge, Sam and I went with the option of boating in. The lodge is located 27 miles upstream from Pointe du Bois on the Winnipeg River. And this river can certainly be intimidating. Claiming more than a few props and lower units, this river is littered with rocks and reefs. While at one point I knew the river run like the back of my hand, I was very fine with having a qualified boat driver take us up to the lodge. Here we are. Some things look the same, some things look very different, but welcome to Eagle Nest Lodge. Sam, lessons at 5 a.m. Fishing's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I used to maintain these grounds, Sam. This is where I got poison ivy somewhere in here. It's a terrible story. <laughs> Sam just said, this is all ours. Welcome to our cabin. Look at these. Isn't this amazing? Look at that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Isn't this great? And they had a fire going for us. It's all toasty warm in here. Do you want to sleep in every bed? Whoa! This or two? What? what? There's two? Two bathrooms? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Bedroom number Whoa. one. Whoa! One, two, three. Four, five. Oh, that's nice. And six? Seven. <laughs> Seven. All right, to the deck. Whoa, wow. Isn't this amazing? This is huge. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back. I have so many good memories here. Time is it? Dinner time. Ladies first. Isn't this nice? This one? This is ours? <laughs> Beautiful. I could have a fishing rod out there probably with some bells on you. <laughs> Thank you. Chicken noodle. <laughs> Soup spoon. <laughs> Thank you very much. What do we got, Sam? Give me a rundown. Be -be -back, be -be -back, be -be -back ribs. Potato. Looks like a. What, is, <laughs> what just poke it with your finger? What did they do? The double. Twice baked. That one. And then we got some veggies. And covered in a brown butter sage. I don't know what this is. Balsamic glaze. Very good. Can you eat all of that? <laughs> never. <laughs> never. 
you. What do you got in the plate there, Sam? I some ribs. Well, ribs for a night snack. Do we have enough fishing gear, Sam? It is too much. <laughs> Sam's got all the tackle. <laughs> this is Tanner. Tanner, say hello. How's it going? Have you been on film before? <laughs> Am I just like putting you on the spot right now? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> How long have you been guiding here? Uh, second year. Second year, nice. Tanner is going to be our guide. Had you go on a sludge here. And uh, as I said, this brings back a lot, a lot of memories. I started guiding here when I was 15. Summer grade 10, I came up here. And I did two and a half years. I was very, very green. Very green when I came up here. I'm gonna share some stories with you of just some of the some of the dumb things I did. But I, I did get better, I, I like to think so. But uh, today we're starting with some walleye fishing on the Winnipeg River. And uh, yeah, we got a pretty sweet boat. They've uh, upgraded the boats since those last year. We're in a 185 competitor tiller. We're going fishing. Hey Sam, would you like to tell us about our first spot? Um, this spot is called? Wait, the grocery store. The grocery store. Do you know why? Because we're going to get food here? Yes, exactly. I'm assuming. <laughs> I assume that as well. I didn't actually ask. Alright, Guy Tanner, we're catching shore lunch here. That's the plan. Look at that big pan in the back. How deep are you fishing? Going to come up to around 15 or so, drop back down. And we'll slowly. drift with the current sort of deal? Yeah. Jig and minnow? Jig and minnow. Jig and minnow! Sam's favorite. <laughs> Oh, it's big. Eight inch sauger. <laughs> Fry him up. Tanner promised fish and he did not disappoint. It might be lunch. I'm providing for the crew. Sam, you're welcome. Yes, thank you, dear. <laughs> Sam eats like three walleye herself, so we'll just have to keep that in mind. That has never been true. I She's got on. One. It's huge! You're providing, Sam. <laughs> She's on again. Feels very small. <laughs> oh. oh, Sam, do you want a picture of that one? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm on. Ooh. Little tip for you, if you're fishing with an inexperienced wall angler, or if you're an inexperienced wall angler like myself, a drop shot is such a great way to keep your bait in the strike zone. So here guys, I'll show you the basics of the drop shot. I've talked about it before, but essentially the beauty of the drop shot is you're always keeping your bait in the strike zone. For a walleye often, you know, it's within 12 inches of the bottom. So what we're doing is we got our main line, our braid, I'm using 10 pound braid here. And then to like a, you know, eight to 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. And then you're tying a small little octopus hook right there. And then your weight, so this weight just clips on. If I ever snag, this will break off, but essentially this weight sits on the bottom. And now, because we're doing a drift with the current, it's like going up and down over the boulders. But wherever that weight is, I know that my bait is, you know, right now it's probably six inches, eight inches off bottom. So it's real good for keeping it near the bottom. And if you do snag, you just have to, you know, put a new weight on, you don't have to retie every time. So it's been good so far since I've put it on. Half the motor off. An adult size smallie. They're getting bigger. Well, we got lunch. Thanks to Sam. All right, we're pike fishing now. Checking the bays. Welcome to the Winnipeg River. Oh, I scared you. <laughs> oh, oh, give it the water, Sam. He wants to eat it. Put it in the water! You were yelling at you me! You gotta put your lure back in the water! <laughs> Sam, that was a... Don't I got yell him. at I got me. him! I got him! <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that the same one? Probably. I think so. It's gotta be. Oh, oh, oh! Uh oh. We're good. <laughs> I'll clean up the second, Sam. Alrighty. Here we go. First pike at Eagle Nest. 
hungry, hungry. Tried to eat Sam's and then ate my bucktail. Shall we put her back? Is she gone? Well, that fish fell victim to a bucktail. Bucktail are just such good fish hooking baits because you got these two blades. It's just like a super sized little like MEP spinner, but just a treble hook. So when that fish nips, he's just getting hooks. Like that's the first thing he gets. Really good hookups compared to like a jerk bait. A fish kind of just hit it all different angles, but a bucktail, I don't know, you don't lose that many fish. They're really easy to work. You just cast and wind and uh, they just drive big pike, big muskies crazy. So it's probably what we're gonna be throwing quite a bit of the time. Ah! If he's hungry, was it a fish? We got pike eyed again. And that pike comes and gives you that stink eye. Sam doesn't believe me, but I've in multiple occasions seen pike in a bay stick their head out of the water. I don't know if they're just pike that are screwed up and on their deathbed, but in, I don't in know. In this bay uh, specifically, I've had that happen twice. Do you th does it feel like they're looking at you sometimes? A little bit, Like yeah. maybe, I don't know. It feels like they know you're there and that's why they're sticking their heads out. I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> I don't know. If they can get spooked by you, I think they'd be smart enough to potentially like check you out as well. I mean, you hear about people catching muskies and pike in the prop wash because they're following the boat. So obviously they're intrigued. I've heard of muskies like biting the trolling motor. So what do you think Sam lunchtime? You're on? Mm-hmm. It's time for shore lunch. My favorite time of the day. We got some walleyes to eat. And uh, yeah, I might even help. I can't just sit still. You know, my gut instincts are gonna kick in. I'm gonna start chopping down trees, flaying fish. Yeah, here we are. Welcome to Upstairs Downstairs. Well, today is the day that I come out of guiding retirement. See if I still got it. What are we dealing with here, Sam? We're at our shore lunch spot. I'm relaxing. Isn't this amazing? Yeah, we parked the boat over there. Yeah. Clean fish over there. Walked up here. He's got a little station, a little grill. Nice little bench for me to lounge on. Well, it sounds like there's a visitor coming for shore lunch by a float plane, which is ridiculous. You've done this before. Not a couple times. Well, there's Jessica's ride to shore lunch. Pretty sweet. <laughs> and it is ready. It's ready. Wow, we come up and it's just done. Amazing. I caught the fish. If there's any bones, you can blame it on me. <laughs> if you've not had a classic Canadian shore lunch, you're absolutely missing out. I'm sure being outdoors in such a beautiful location has something to do with it, but you just can't beat those fresh walleye and fries. One of the biggest skills guiding taught me was how to prepare fish in so many different ways. And watching Tanner whip up such an incredible meal for us brought back so many great memories. Thanks to Chef Tanner. Sam, what would you give that out of 10? 10. That was the right answer. But now, we're gonna burn those calories and go cast four. Pike. Northern Pike. Holy smokes. Well, pike eye, we got pike eye, did you see Holy that? Holy That was smokes. getting pike eye. That, oh, oh no. he just ate it. Didn't. Cast back, cast back, cast out behind the boat. You just got pike eyed. I'm telling you. Wow. Do you believe that it's a thing now? I was so con you just cast oh, right I'm sorry. over my lunch. That was so confusing and weird. And then he ate your lure. That was a decent sized pike too. Cast, cast there. I'm telling you, getting pike eyed is a thing. I thought he was dead for a second. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> was that him? <laughs> no. That one was quite small, but he just like popped it out of the water. Things are happening. <laughs> oh, I wish my GoPro had the pike eye on it. It might be out of the corner. Because I saw it, so if I saw it, that means the GoPro saw it. And that would be incredible footage. Then I could finally debunk the myth of pike eyed. So That's gonna be the title of this video. Pike eyed at Eagle Nest.
I got a fish! She's on? That was not a very good bite, though. No? No. Oh. Nice. Good job, Sam. Thank you. Nice fish. All right. Sam's fish snob. Ah! Oh, oh. <laughs> you know what? The most important part in that whole scenario is that the fish made it back in the water. <laughs> Better than you drop it in the boat. No, I'm serious. Uh... I got another one. Nice. Get it, girl. How's it feel to be a pike master? Because I look so good. All right, show us some this fish. There you go, another jackfish. Beautiful. <laughs> you always got back rain gear and you always got back shades. Ooh, that's a little bit better. Now he's just cruising towards us. Stand down a bit. Could be a little bit bigger class fish. Nice. It's the biggest one so far. Gonna grab the vlog cam, Sam. Oh Woo! no! Oh. Oh. I shouldn't have let him get on the surface there. Man. That was high 30s, yeah. Jeez. That was the one. We caught pike, we got smallmouth bass, we caught walleye, we caught sauger, we caught perch. Five species today on the Winnipeg River. Eagle Nest Lodge, day one, and I had the chance for the fish. I, mean, I don't fish of the trip, but fish of the day. That's, that was a nice big pike, probably like high 30 incher. Came off right by the net. Not the net man's fault, it was probably my fault for lifting up a little too soon, but hey, we're on the fish. We got another day and a half yet, and today was fantastic. Shore lunch was just perfect, and we're back to the lodge for another Great evening. Thank you, Tanner. What are we doing now? Wait. Okay, 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 okay. So I'm always more of uh, the fish knob. Mm -hmm. Tell me about uh, what you appreciate in uh, in these places I take you. Well, you always say that I'm a fish knob too. Okay. So don't make me an overall round snob because that's just rude. But accommodations. I just love. You like a nice kitchen? Yeah, this is mostly our tackle store for now, <laughs> but um, that view. Okay, well, it's kind of overexposed, but pretend that there's a nice view there. We'll put in a picture or something. Yeah, it's just, it's so beautiful. And like, this place is huge. There's eight beds. We don't need that. It's just, it's so amazing. Anyways, we also go to the main lodge and have incredible meals served to us. Breakfast, and then we do a shore lunch and then dinner and it's phenomenal the chef here and he's, he's so nice he's so nice he comes out and chats with us and how nice so nice all right let's go for dinner okay Honestly wasn't expecting the meals that were waiting ahead of us in the dining room every night. It felt like we were stepping straight into an episode of Chef's Table. Every meal was so creative, so beautiful, and so delicious. Heading out on the water again. Walleye, pike, shore lunch, maybe some smallmouth, who knows? Eagle Nest Lodge, day two. Here we go. What's up? We're back on the lake. Uh, yeah, we're doing walleyes first thing. We need to catch shore lunch. Um, yeah, I think that's... Oh! Oh, and by the way, this morning Sam is sporting the... Sam Cam, Sam Cam, it is time for... Sam Cam. Sam Cam. It's a Sam Cam sort of morning. So we're fishing sort of a pinch point with 
What did you say, comes up to 15 feet in the middle? Yeah. So essentially, you've got a reef over here, reef over there, and there's kind of a saddle that sticks across, just a shallow spot. So you got deep water on either side, it comes up, kind of like a 15 foot bar. So we're drifting and, and on the river here, I mean, you're dealing with a lot of currents. So a lot of the, you can just hover on the same spot, but a, a pretty effective technique is just getting a slow drift, kind of covering the whole spectrum and kind of figure out what depth you're at rather than just sitting on one spot and waiting for the fish to come to you. He's on. First bite of the day. What do we got? Looks like lunch. It looks like perfect lunch right there. It's just something different if you're used to fishing a lake. The Winnipeg River's huge. It's it's a beast and it can be a little, you know, crazy to navigate, but once you once you figure it out, there's like loaded with walleyes, loaded with smallmouth that a lot of people don't take advantage of. I think a lot of the time it's uh, the Americans coming up to Eagle Nest that will bass fish in the spring and they can't believe how good the smallmouth bass fishing is because most people come up here for walleyes. Some of the biggest smallmouth in Manitoba get caught out of Eagle Nest. Like I said, this is where my I think it's, yeah, my biggest one or two bass in Manitoba came from. And uh, yeah, Sam's getting bit. Sam's on? What we got, Sam? We got lunch? Your provider. I'll hold that one up to the camera, good job. To everybody at home, Sam got it done. There we go. He's on a little better. Net. I'm netting it. Oh yeah, might be a pike. Might be a pike or a big walleye. Nice walleye. Oh, and I almost knocked it off. I tried my best. <laughs> nice. Another one for Tanner. I'm not catching them apparently, but the other guys are, so that's all that really matters. It's like 30 or 40 grand for first or something, I think. You on? Ooh, nice one for Sam. So Sam cam rolling. Yeah. I didn't, uh, oh, 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 look at that. Look at that soft rod tip. You can tell that little fish is, oh, maybe it's not that little. Oh, sorry. Ooh, it's a smallie. That guy we aren't gonna eat today. Well, as I mentioned, I guided here uh, 2000, summer grade 10. I was like 15 or 16 years old when I started guiding here. Uh, I remember my parents dropped me off at the landing. I didn't have my drivers yet. <laughs> it was so green. Man, I, I've got a couple stories, some that I should share, some that I maybe shouldn't share. But uh, yeah, I wasn't, from my friend group, a couple other people, kind of the reason I, I applied here and, and decided to start guiding at Eagle Nest was um, the Tully family. Um, I've fished the bass tournament uh, in Kenora with Mark Tully. Peter Tully, his older brother, guided here as well. He was the head guide and he kind of, I think, helped me get the job as well. And then Aaron Weeb guided here. So between Peter and Aaron, they were like, yeah, Eagle Nest would be, you know, a great place to guide. So yeah, that's, that's where I started. A lot of people don't know that I guess they guided here as well. But uh, yeah, 15 year old Jay was so green, had, had no idea what was going on. I remember my first day of guiding ever. Typically as the guide, you want your guests to catch the fish. You know, sometimes the guide will throw, you know, fish for Wally a little bit. Today we're probably gonna get Tanner to help us try to catch a big pike, but typically you want your guests to catch the big fish. And I remember my first day, I was so excited about fishing and not the guiding aspect that I ended up out fishing my guests while smallmouth fishing. And I think I caught three master anglers, which was not good. I was casting ahead of them, which is not something you should do. And I, uh, after that day, I was so pumped. I'd caught two or three master bass. And I, I, you know, came back to the lodge and stuff. And I think the guests maybe relayed that message to, to management. And I got sat down with, with Peter and Fred, the owner. And they were like, Jay, you gotta let, you let, gotta let your guests catch the fish. So that they were great about it. They were super nice, but uh, I learned, well, no, no, I was too eager. And, and I realized that the guide isn't, isn't supposed to be the one hammering the big fish, but that's, that's the first story. I'm gonna share some more stories yet, some of my, uh, some of my mess ups, but I, I promise you I improved and uh, they, they invited me back the next year, but, but I'll, share, I'll share like one, maybe one other pretty embarrassing story from my first year yet, but I need to catch more walleye. Nope, just the weight. 
Oh, we got lunch. Nice. I'm using a bit of a longer rod for drop shotting. It's a seven and a half foot medium light, um, 10 pound braid. I use like 10 pound braid for a lot of my walleye stuff. Um, if you were to just spool up one reel for walleye fishing, 10 pound braid is great. You can throw swim baits on it. You can drop shot with it, jigs. Um, might be like a little light for trolling crank baits, but you can do, you know, a lot of your walleye techniques. And then yeah, as, for, uh, as far as a leader, it's nice to tie on a chunk of fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is the clear, like, it looks like monofilament, but it, it doesn't stretch. Uh, tie on like a three foot, five foot, 10 foot chunk, depending on, you know, technique and how clear the water is. But normally that'll be six to 12 pound test. And uh, yeah, it just gives you a clear leader. Fish can't see it as well. Leave me alone. Ouch. Ooh, that was nice. Slick at him. There we go. Finally got myself a Walter. Look at that perky dorsal. Perfect eater, 14 incher. Going in the well. All right, a couple casts and kidney. Yeah, let's do it. What? Oh, That's a yeah. fish. <laughs> We're just about no, to call it. I think we have each other. No, no, we don't. Do you have a fish, Sam? I got something decent. Nice. All right, over to Sam. Get that. Ooh, this is something big. Get that line down, Sam. Yeah. Here, I can grab this. Ooh, we're through. Let's take it. We'll just break it if we need to. All right, Sam's got something big. Oh. Maybe try to spin the motor. Try to get that rod down, Sam. Like down, down, down. I'm thinking pike. <laughs> Is Sam camera rolling? Yeah. Big old gator. <laughs> In the little basket. <laughs> Hold him up to this camera, Sam. Kneel down. Oh, no. Eagle nest double header. Look at that. Awesome. All right, both going back, I think. You can go back on that side. Ah, don't do that. You can just let him go. Good job, that was a great double header. All right, on that note, we are switching to pike. Uh, that, that was good, Sam thought she had me hooked. <laughs> good excitement in the boat. Great morning, but we still got like an hour before shore lunch and we're gonna start on our 10,000 casts for a big pike. Yep, ooh, we are hooked up instantly. I don't think it's that big, but that is a good start to pike fishing. First cast on the old headbanger. That's a nice pike. All right, that is a nice chunky little pike. Woo! There she goes. Great morning at Eagle Nest. A little bit of pike, a little bit of walleye, cool double header. It is time for my favorite meal of the day, or any day, shore lunch. I was thinking just doing a quick little sequence of, uh, you know, not even slow, but just fish getting cut, fire, oil, just like ch -ch 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 -ch, a bunch of shots. And then it'll be like just a really fast sequence. Do you know what I'm talking about? You got your tartar, you got your cookies, you got your lemon, you got your fries, you got your fish, you got your beans, you got your Sam. Did you eat all this? Yes. We've been overfed by that man right there. And cookies. Ready for a big pike? Yeah. How big? Got uh, shore lunch burps. What do you want, Sam? You want the big one? Yeah, I don't remember fishing this bay when I was here. You don't? No. Is that a pretty, pretty popular big pike bay? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm assuming that's where it got its name. Yeah, I don't know, but like, I feel like every lodge has a bay of pigs. They have a bay of pigs at Wallstown, it's good, but it's not like the best spot on the lake, necessarily. 
the snake pit, the Bay of Pigs, the slough. Oh, I just got, yep. Oh, oh, it's decent. Oh, oh that's pretty nice. It's bigger. That's pretty big. Yeah, yeah, he's going under. Oh, wow, he's fighting good. It's a good fish. Hit right by the boat on the headbanger. Come on. I'm gonna try not to get her head out of the water like last time. Nice! We got a big one. They tell me this bay is called Bay of Pigs. And you doubted them. Why well, didn't I even fish and you when I worked them. here? All right, look at this big gator. That is what we came for. Big eagle nest pike right there. Second day, and we got it done. That's gonna be, yeah, 38. Nice. She's going right back in the water. And I'm just gonna support her until she wants to swim. Hold her by the tail. Look at that pig. Oh, she wants to go. Yes, we did it. That's the fish we came for right there and they get bigger. But this bait is what I lost, the big one on yesterday. And this one I think was bigger than the one I lost on the headbanger, Chad. And it's just, it's just a perfect pike size. Got that bright orange tail that they key in on, and yeah, Bay of Pigs, we're fishing, you know, what, what would you say, five to 10 feet of water with some weeds mixed in. Main river channel's right behind us, and these fish will sometimes, you know, hang on the main river channel, come up here, metabolize their food, maybe eat another meal, but uh, yeah, it's lived up to its name, Bay of Pigs. Oh, yep. Oh, that was a big boil. Oh, that was a big boil. Oh, my. Oh, ho, 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 ho. they're chowing this. Oh, wow, this fish is strong. And he's definitely got me in some weeds or in something else. This is big. At least I think he hit way at the end of my cast, just right under the surface. I'm trying to keep his head down. With these big fish, if they get their head out of the water, that's very often when you lose them. So I'm just keeping the rod down. Oh, he's pretty big actually. Oh, he's big. Ooh, ooh, oh, another big one. Bad pig, baby. Look at this. That bait is just gone. Just gone down his trap. Luckily, barbless hooks might not be too bad to pull out. All right. That fish absolutely gobbled. Gobbled, gobbled. It's going right on the bump board. That's a long fish. 30, yeah, 38, 39. But look at the head on this thing. All right, look at the. Look at that, big old lamprey mark, huge head, some sort of discoloration. He inhaled that bait. Look at the underbite. Man, that is a big, big old pike. Look at that head. There she goes. Nice and slow, back down. She fought a hard battle. I thought we just caught the fish in the trip. Now we caught two fish in the trip. He saved the best way for last. Typical, typical guide. So good. All right, it is time. The story you guys have been waiting for, I sunk a boat. I sunk one of Fred's boats at Eagle Nest. It was my first week, 15 year old Jay. And uh, we were doing a, a portage into Crow Duck that, that day. So Crow Duck is another lake nearby. There's boat stash there. So you drive your boat to Crow Duck, go fish at the top and then come back at the end of the day. So we went in, had a great day at Crow Duck. It's probably about like a 40 minute boat ride to the, to the boats there. Probably caught like 150 walleyes. I'm just, I'm just kind of making that up between the three of us. And uh, you know, Great day, great day back. It kind of been raining, so there's some water in the bottom of the boat. So on some of the camp boats, the plug would be on the inside. So you could flip on the bilge, let it run, or you could just pull the plug and uh, that would be an easy way to drain it while you're driving back. Because as long as you're moving, that water will drain out the back of your boat. And um, I pulled the plug. It had been raining all day, a bunch of water in the back of the boat, 45 minute boat ride back to the, back to the lodge. You know, I'm, I'm feeling great. It's my like first or second week of guiding. I'm feeling invincible, invincible. So we get back to the dock, my boat's dry, tie up my boat, go up for dinner. And all of a sudden, one of the other guides runs up to the main lodge and he's like, guys, we got a boat sunk at the dock. And I'm like, oh man, whose boat is this? I feel so bad for them. Like, uh, I just, I felt bad for whoever it was. And we walked down to the dock and my heart just sunk. It was, it was my boat. I forgot to put the plug back in. I pulled it out and I think I put it in my pocket or sat on it or something. 
and my boat was at the bottom of the river. You could see the cowling sticking out still. And the other guys look at me and they're like, okay, well you gotta, you gotta jump in. So I jumped in the water, full clothes, and I had to put the plug back in. We were able to lift the boat up and pump most of it out with a big industrial sized bilge. And they're like, okay, next you gotta go tell Fred what happened. So there I am, 15 years old, looking like a wet rat. And I walk into the dining room, Fred's having dinner with his wife. <laughs> and he took it so well, they were incredible about it. But uh, that was, that's how I started off my guiding career. I sunk a boat. Uh, it took a little work, I think they had to bring the, the motor in to, to get it drained and whatever else, but. Is that it? Was that, was that okay? Is that a good story or no? Stop it. Stop. So I was pretty bad. You were the one that sunk the boat at the dock. I <laughs> sunk a boat at the dock. I, that was me. <laughs> had you actually heard that? I did hear that. Oh of man. Someone uh, pulling the plug and then forgetting that yeah. didn't sunk the boat. Guys, this is what you're looking for when you're pike fishing. This is the good, good green cabbage. Like I said, there's kind of a mix of everything and it's nice when you have variety, but this is your most typical pike cabbage. The greener, the better. You will catch fish out of brown stuff, but the green stuff is just alive. It's, you know, it's bringing the whole food chain in. So that's, that's what you want. And sometimes you can see the weeds, sometimes you don't. And sometimes you just, you catch them on your, your lure and you know they're there, but weeds are good at this time of year. August, September is prime for cabbage. Ooh, okay. Oh, she's on. Sam's hooked up. That looks like it's got some weight. All right, Sam, this is your moment. Give us, give us an update, Sam, what's going on? It's not, it's fine. Everything's fine. That's a decent fish. On the headbanger, Jay let me borrow. Another pike for Sam. Finally, back in the game, she took a break. Now she's back with vengeance. All right, you can put it back. Energy too. Well, Sam, should we call it a day? Sure. Was that a trick? That was a trick. <laughs> no, no, one more spot. One more bay. So this rock is where you catch the bass, or some bass? Yeah. On that smaller walleye, Jake? Yeah. Got two mast or something. Nice. Rock Ooh. Nice. Oh, and the bait came out. Beauty. All right. We're getting spoiled here. Another pike, a big old underbite. That's what happens when they get big. Nice. Well, quite the day, quite the day. All right, I'm gonna throw the bass rod for a couple casts and we can call it Sam. a couple casts, just a quick 20 inch bass. Ooh, ooh. I had to cast for bass before we left. Oh, <laughs> biggest bass of the trip. Tanner told me, said there's some big smallies that live around this rock. Literally the same boulder that I just caught that pike off of. <laughs> Probably pushing three pounds on the big swim bait. Guys, everything in the Winnipeg River. Pop them out, going back. We're calling it on that. Amazing day. Thank you, Tanner, for a sweet day. And just, yeah, multi-species fun. We got half day left tomorrow and then we gotta call it a trip, but got some big fish today. Eat some good food. Yeah, that's it. It is our last morning in paradise. We're just gonna fish for a couple hours, but take a second and look at this view from our cabin. Well, from our side of our cabin. Yes. What's the plan this morning, boss? 
I'm gonna go for some walleye first thing this morning. Nice, we got like two hours. That's it. Then we gotta head home, Sam. Well, pretty long boat ride. Could have swam. Fishing some deeper humps here? What's the, what's the scoop? Yeah, fishing some deeper humps. Uh, all the river funnels through this. So a lot, get a lot bigger walleye hold up on these uh, big rocks. On these fingers? Shelves. I hit that rock right, right there somewhere. One of those. Within sight of the lodge, we're catching fish. I'm just gonna boat sling this guy. Catching Walters right in front of the lodge. Going back. There's someone taking pictures. There we go. Hooked up. Drop shot Walters. Little octopus hook right in the snout. And lucky for this walleye, we're not doing shore lunch today. Yeah, girl. Everybody, I caught a fish. I caught a fish. Yes. All right, Sam, one last cast and we'll call it a trip. This wasn't it? No, nope, one more, huh? always one more. Make it count. Always one more. Make it count. It's safe to say Eagle Nest exceeded expectations in all aspects. The lodging, the food, the fishing, and it was just so great to see all those familiar faces again. I not only want to thank the crew at Eagle Nest for giving Sam and I such a wonderful stay, but I also want to thank them for taking a chance and hiring that 15-year-old boy all those years ago. 